Good morning and welcome to virtual worship at Advent Lutheran in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. We're glad you're here this morning. And today is the second Sunday of Easter. I'm Liza Hawkins, one of Advent's seminarians. I'm a candidate for word and sacrament ministry in the ELCA. The call committee candle is burning behind me to remind us to keep the call committee and all involved in our prayers as they interview potential candidates to be the next pastor at Advent. But now let us enter into worship with a gathering song led by our encounter band. Baptism. 
We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now this morning we have a few announcements. We were so happy to be together in person last week. And we realize that we have some audio-visual kinks that we need to work out. But we're very hopeful to start gathering again in person May 2nd. So we'll be virtual the next few Sundays in Easter and back together in person May 2nd. Have you checked out the new online bulletin? The address is theadventchurch.updates.church. Go ahead and learn how to use this resource because we will continue to use this bulletin format when we gather in person again with our worship services. In June 2019, Advent approved a $30,000 expenditure to upgrade our audiovisual capabilities. There is a stipulation, the AV team must have the money in hand before they spend it. So now we'll pause for an update from our AV team. Hello, the AV team is excited to share that we have reached $10,200 of our $15,000 goal. This means that we've been able to purchase equipment for worship presentation, live stream tools, and new speakers for our audio setup. This weekend, the AV team is installing electrical equipment in the building so we can be ready for in-person worship. Once again, Pumpkin and I would like to thank you for your contributions to the AV fund. Uh, we're really excited, we're almost there, and we're starting to install stuff, so we should see all these changes soon for in-person and online worship. Thanks again. This church is our spiritual anchor. Please strengthen and bolster our ministry because your offerings provide strength and hope both now and in our future. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering. 
Lord, use our voices. Lord, use our hands. Lord, use our lives. They are yours. We are an offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, we give to you. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering, we are an offering. Please refer to our prayer list in the e-news for the latest updates. But as we join together in prayer this morning, I thought I'd give a few updates on the congregation. Darlene Kummel had back surgery last Monday. Cheryl Herberg is continuing to receive physical therapy. Ray Eddy is dealing with a bad infection where he had hip replacement surgery last year. Steve Miller continues to recover from heart surgery. Teresa Mulgren is receiving iron infusions. Jerry Tripcheck needs eye surgery, and Lee Stapleton had ear surgery at the beginning of April. Leading us in prayer today will be Catherine Burnett. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, unite the whole church on earth, so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You direct the nations, guide all in authority, that they shepherd their peoples in the way of love. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority, and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Send peace to those who are lonely, hurting, or afraid. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You give us fellowship with one another in the faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. May your love and spirit offer healing and comfort to those with illness and health concerns. Today, we especially remember Darlene, Cheryl, Ray, Steve, Teresa, Jerry, and Lee. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us now wish for one another the peace of God. And at some point today, text the peace to some of your family and friends. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you and also with you and also with you reading from the book of acts today will be betty rousey and reading our gospel for this morning is jack nelson a reading from acts chapter 4 verses 32 through 35 now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and a great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses 
sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel, according to John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we'll have a sermon for all of God's children. I bet this box looks familiar to many of you. You're used to, on a Sunday morning, especially when we were in person, Pastor David would have had something hiding in this box, and you didn't know what it was until we opened it and looked inside. You're used to having something, I think I remember a drumstick being in here once, or maybe a Christmas ornament, something, something that we can pick up and touch with our hands to help us learn something about Jesus, right? What if I told you that there was nothing in this box this morning? Would you believe me? Whether you believe me or not, there is indeed nothing in this box. My friend Molly can confirm that the box is empty. There's nothing in here to help us touch something and learn something new about Jesus. In our gospel reading for this morning, we read a story about a guy who 
refuses to believe something. He refuses to believe the good news that Jesus is alive and not dead because he, there's nothing for him to touch. He can't see Jesus. He can't, he can't touch the spots in Jesus' hands that were hurt. And he has a hard time believing the good news because he's used to being able to touch something. Sometimes in life we have to believe things even when we have no proof, we have no evidence. There's nothing that we can touch and use to figure out something about Jesus. And the good news is that we have people all around us who can help us learn about Jesus and learn about Jesus' love for us by telling us things. And we have to practice believing the things that people tell us about Jesus, even when we have nothing to touch. And that's what our friend Thomas does in our Bible story for this morning. And that's really hard. It's hard to believe things when we can't see them and when we can't touch them. But we can look to our parents and our friends and our family, and they can help us figure things out in a new way. We'll close with the repeat after me prayer this morning. So if you'll fold your hands like we do when we pray and repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, thank you for being with us always. Thank you for being with us always. Thank you for coming into our hearts. Thank you for coming into our hearts. Even when we can't see you. Even when we can't see you. Just as you make us happy. Just as you make us happy. May we share your love with others. May we share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Greetings on this second Sunday of Easter, April 11th, the year 2021, the day when I have finally decided that I am going to start double-checking the lectionary text before agreeing to preach in Pastor David's stead. I'm mostly kidding, of course, but the gospel reading for today is a very full text, a very well-known text, and a hard shift from last week. In last week's text from Mark, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome go looking for Jesus. They take their spices and head off to the tomb to pay respect to Jesus and anoint him. They are looking for Jesus' dead body. Despite all of the hints and promises Jesus told them, they were prepared to find the body of their friend and teacher in the tomb right where they left it. Instead, they find a mystery figure who tells them Jesus is alive and gone. They respond to this news by running away, hiding, and keeping their mouths shut. Now I do know that today is not Easter Sunday, and today's text is from John, not Mark. But this Sunday's text is a continuation of the Easter Sunday reading from John, which is a very different telling of the resurrection. See, in the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene goes to find Jesus' body, which is gone, and she runs to tell the others. When the other disciples arrive and see the empty tomb, they hang their heads and go home. Mary stays by the tomb, crying, because the teacher who changed her life is dead, and she's faced with the reality that there's nothing she can do about it. We think of Easter Sunday as the day of joyful alleluias, but it's important to notice that joy was not the disciples' first response. They are anxious and afraid. They're traumatized because just days before they watched as their friend was violently murdered by the state. It's not until Mary sees Jesus with her own eyes that she starts to process what's going on. After she sees for herself that Jesus is not dead, his body has not been stolen, but he is alive and talking to her. Then she runs to the rest of them and says, I have seen the Lord. We get the same kind of story this week. The same disciples who hung their heads and snuck back home were hiding with the doors locked, presumably because they didn't believe what Mary told them. They are still afraid. 
It's not until Jesus suddenly appears through a locked door and shows them the marks in his hands and side that they finally rejoice because Jesus is alive. They weren't all there. We know that Thomas wasn't with them. The text doesn't tell us why he wasn't locked down with the rest of them, and it doesn't tell us where he was, so we get the chance to imagine. I like to think that he wasn't there because he believed Mary Magdalene. He wasn't there because he was out looking for Jesus. He believed Mary when she said, I have seen the Lord. I think it makes sense that when the other disciples say the same thing, he needs a minute. Fool me once, right? We have seen the Lord, they say to him. Yeah, okay, Thomas says. I can't imagine a lonelier feeling you're already grieving, and all your friends suddenly know something you don't know. You're the only one still grieving while everyone else is rejoicing. You have not yet seen the Lord. If you didn't believe it last week, if your heart wasn't transformed and filled with joy and fully convinced of the resurrection, I think that's okay. Sometimes good news, hopeful news, Unbelievable news takes time to sink in. While the Revised Common Lectionary is not a perfect system, I think the placement of this text within the lectionary is fitting. It's always the Sunday right after Easter. And this text says to me that doubt in the face of good news is a natural response. Fear and anxiety can linger a little bit longer than we expect. Most importantly, it says to me that the good news of resurrection, of life over death, of fulfilled promises, comes in waves. We know that things like grief comes in waves. Our hearts and minds don't often feel the fullness of grief immediately and all at once. And the same can be true for hope. This Easter season, hope is going to come in waves. More and more people are getting vaccinated. We will once again be able to gather indoors together. Our season of grief and shadow is starting to transform into new resurrected life. I think the really good news in the text this morning is that Jesus is risen regardless of if we are ready or able or willing to believe it. The Holy Spirit is alive and at work in the world, and if we pay enough attention, we can always find someone who says, I have seen the Lord. May we believe them. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. It's the song of the redeemed Rising from the African plain It's the song of the forgiven Drowning out the Amazon rain The song of Asian believers Filled with God's holy fire It's every tribe, every tongue, and every nation A song born of a grateful it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. Let it rise above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. Let praises echo from the towers of cathedrals. Songs and from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none ring truer than this. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah. He reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns.